Hello, welcome to Ikate's Crossing. I've been watching the little white book hashtag or spreads, or they um, little white book spreads, guidebook spreads, um, things. So I pulled out all my little white books. So let's take a moment to sort of take a breath and let's pull out the guidebooks and let's have a look and see what spreads are in each book. So this is going to take a little bit of time. This is going to take a moment. Okay, little white book. So we're going to pull out one at a time. So the latest book, um, little white book I got was the Egyptian Art Nouveau Tarot, right? So let's have a look. See what spread is available in this book. So let's just take a moment to look through the descriptions of the cards. Now it comes to using your deck. Now, the most straightforward spread is a single card. Okay, so in the guidebook it's got the most straightforward spread is a single card used to answer your questions. Look at the card, let the imagery speak to you and write down what you think it says. If you feel stuck at or lost in what is being said, look at the keywords used in the booklet. When you're done, pick up all the cards and shuffle them, put into the deck. This was your deck, will be ready for you. See, there's just a one card spread. So nothing in that one. Okay, so let's look at the Silver Witchcraft Tarot. Okay, we have a five card spread. Okay, in the Silver Witchcraft Tarot, the numbers show the cycle of the year through the traditional pagan holidays and the progression of num of numbers. These are the metaphors that can be trans extrapolated to say situa to any situation, regardless of time and year. Here are the number associations for Silver Witchcraft. Okay, so that's the numbers. That's there. Okay, so don't worry about that. Let's go through the titles of page. Uh, titles on the mem. The, sorry, the um, the meanings of the cards. Right, the spread is called Sabbat spread. Okay, so this is called the Sabbat spread. These five cards. Yeah. Okay, so we've got the center is one, two, three, four. Okay, it says here, as magical practitioners, one of the reasons we celebrate the Sabbaths is to help turn the wheel, as it were. So note that nature needs our help, but as one way to stay in alignment with nature, the spread can be used for any of the Sabbaths. Set it up, which we did. The first one is theme. For this position, take the four cards one from each of the suits that represent Sabbath you're preparing for. For example, the twos are for Yule, the threes for Imbolc, and so on. Shuffle them and draw one. This is a particular facet of the Sabbath for you to focus on this year. Then you shift, so, oh, for the position, okay, it says here, number one is a theme. For this position, take the four cards from one from each of the suits that represent the Sabbaths for you preparing for. For example, the twos are for your, the threes for in bulk, and so on. Shuffle them and draw them. This is particularly facets of the Sabbaths for you to focus on this year. Shuffle the other. Shuffle the other three cards back into the deck and draw the rest of the cards as usual. Two is foundation, understanding that you already have and should build on this year. Three is aspiration, this is what you should reach for this year. Four, release, this is what you should release this year. And number five is action. This is the action you should take to help turn the wheel this year. So let me read that again. 
As magical practitioners, one of the reasons we celebrate the Sabbaths is to help turn the wheel, as it were. Not that nature needs our help, but it is one way we stay in alignment with nature. The spread can be used. So see the diagram on page. Okay, so the first one is theme. For this position, take the four cards, one from each of the suits that represent the Sabbath you are preparing for. For example, twos are for Yule, threes for Imbolc. Let's have a look and see where it says Sabbaths. Oh, so that was the first one here. So it said one is for self, two is for Yule, three is for Imbolc, four is Astara, five is Voltaine, six is Letha, seven is Lamas, eight is Marvin, nine is Selwyn, and then ten is the universe. So you want numbers two to nine. Uh, <coughs> so take out the numbers 2 to 9 with the, with the four suits. Okay, so you shuffle, draw one, and then put the rest. I see. So you take out all the twos if you want. If you're thinking about your oh, okay. So depending on what what Sabbath it is at the moment, you just take out those four cards from that number. So like I said, two is Yule, three is in bulk, four is Ostara, five is Beltane, six is Letha, seven is Lamas, eight is Marvin, and nine is Sawin. So you take just the four cards, the four suits. One from each suit. Okay, got you. Shuffle those, or draw out one of those four cards. And so whether it's um, wands, cups, pentacles, or swords, and that's what you're going to focus. That's what you're going to focus on within that particular Sabbath. And then you put the others back into the deck and draw the rest of the card as usual. Interesting. So as we're moving into Samhain, you'll want to use all the nines, the four nines. As you move into Samhain, you want to move, take all the four nines out of the pack. Okay, get you now. Okay, so that's the spread for that one there. So that was quite interesting to look at. Let's look at the Fairy Lights Tarot. What spread have we got in here? Doesn't look like there is a spread. Okay, looks like there's no spread in the just the meanings of the cards. Oh, here we go says here, women, readings. Okay, there are many ways to do readings with tarot cards. The simplest is to draw a single card, again, perhaps on a daily basis, when you get, when you are just looking at one card, its meanings can be deeply considered, and it's a great way to learn a new deck and enhance your tarot. As mentioned earlier, this deck was created with the intention of reading two or more cards together as they form one picture, a landscape, you can create, you can enter in your imagination and explore to find the answers to your questions. Otherworldly. Let's try it using a two-card reading. 
mix the cards face down and choose two cards place them side by side so their edges overlap and look at them as one scene interpret the scene as if you were telling a story you can move beyond what is shown to what might happen next or what might have happened that led to this movement you can use the written meanings above well in the guidebook in the little white book to starting process for your storytelling but can also try setting aside the meanings and just draw inspiration from the images themselves okay so that's what they do so that's all that's in that book there fairy lights right let's look at the universal celtic tarot let's see what spread they use here a one two three spread Okay, so that's what it says here in the regards to readings. Whoops. The first card represents the past, the second card the present, and the third card the future. Okay, so that's all that one has. Let's look at the Smithwaite Tarot deck. Here's the Celtic Cross. Okay, here's a Celtic Cross. Okay, so let's look at the Epic Tarot. What spread has it got here? Okay, this one has a six card spread. It's a little different. Okay, so this one here has one, two, three, four, five, six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. <coughs> So with the epic tarot, let's have a look at the spread. Okay, it's called the epic tale of your life. The first card is where you are now. The second one says where you are heading. The third one says your biggest challenge. Number four said how to face the challenge. Number five, your biggest reward. And number six, how to be worthy of the reward. Okay, that sounds interesting. The epic tale of your life. Where you are now, where you are heading, your biggest challenge, how to face the challenge, your biggest reward, and how to be worthy of the reward. Very, very interesting. Okay, so that's a great spread, the epic tale of your life. Where you are now, where you are heading, your biggest challenge, how to face the challenge, your biggest reward, and how to be worthy of the reward. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so that's a good one. Epic Tarot. Let's have a look at the... I'm not going to worry about those ones just there. Let's look at the Chinese Tarot. Okay, just the Celtic cross again. Okay, a, a, um, a version of the Celtic cross. Right, so I'm not going to worry about those. This is Sibylla. Okay, the ancient Italian tarot, which is a tarot de Marseille. Interesting, we've got a seven card spread here. So let's have a look. We have... 
one, two, three, four, five, then six and seven. That's right, this is the one where I need to do some translation because it just gives you, I don't know why, in the English aspect, it only gives you three cards. What are the, but there's actually seven cards. It tells you, oh, you just got three cards. You've got a, a cardamancy spread called the veil with three cards. One, what the querent sees. Two, the veil or the reason why the querent does not see the entire truth. And three, the truth on how things really are. But there's actually seven cards in it. So, and I don't want the attack. Oh, the hand. This spread was, this is the one that I was looking at. So the first one was the, um, the thumb, the index, the middle finger, the ring finger. Um, oh, the little finger and then the pink, the little finger and the ring finger. And then it's got the palm and then it's got the side of the hand. So that's what that one was. But of course, let's see if I can remember. So we've got the thumb that, that's right. So this one was about, yeah, the hand. That's what I was looking at. That seven card spread is, was about the, the hand. So I need to do a little bit of translation in that one there to look at that one. Okay, so this is, was a bit funny because so you've got the English where it says just do a three, three spread called the veil, and yet the in the French it's got that it's called the hand, with the um, with the seven cards including the palm and the side of the hand. So that's something I need to look at. So this is where the English is very different from the rest of the languages, and from what the actual spread is. Okay, so let's look at the Maori tattoo tarot. Okay, this is called the hanged, man, the hanged Man Spread. Is a simple but efficient tool to comprehend an inquiry's present situation and the life's past direction. The position of the cards on the spread corresponds to the body of the hanged man who is suspended. So we have one, two, three, four, and then five. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so number one is the earth element and the inquirer's head, or mind to be precise. The question we may be asked here, what advises mind and common sense? So this card one is what advises mind and common sense. Card number two represents the air element and the inquirer's feet. In the upside down position of the hanged man although feet give us freedom to move at the same time at the same time they always return us to where we belong the question that's asked here is what was a real problem in the past the unsolved problem to be solved now card number three represents a fire element and the inquirer's dominant right hand as the fire element suggests a card in this position so shows a usual course of the querent's action. 
Okay, so this card in this position shows a usual course of the querent's action. Card number four represents the water element and the inquirer's non-dominant left hand. A card in this position tells us how other people can use the querent's habitual behavior to their own advantage. Card number five represents the spirit and the inquirer's heart or soul. In other words, a card in this position answers to the question, in what way the querent's problem can be solved to soothe her or his soul. It's kind of interesting, isn't it? So that's that one there. Next, we have the Romantic Tarot. And the spread we have here is a four-card spread. And the cards are, here's an example. Okay, here's an example. Shuffle the cards and catch them, cut them as you prefer. Then take four cards from the deck and arrange them in a cross around the personal object. Okay, so if you're doing a, so you need a personal object of the person to whom the divinatory attention is directed. Okay. Each card of the Romantic Tarot has a meaning and an automotive divinatory force. However, to read the Romantic Tarot with great profundity, it is possible to put two cards near each other and have them talk to each other. Put them next to a personal object of the man or woman to whom the divinatory attention is directed. So number one illuminates the dark side of the sentimental past. Number two reveals what of that past continues to have hidden in you or in the other person. Number three indicates who will be able to help you understand. And number four offers practical advice or indicates a path that can be tra traveled. One illuminates the dark side of the sentimental past. Number two reveals what of that past continues to have to live hidden in you or the other person. Number three indicates who will be able to help you understand. And number four offers practical advice or indicates a path that can be travelled. After having interpreted the first four cards, continue drawing cards until you find a major arcana card, which must be placed in the centre or, or in the same position occupied by the personal object. Before turning over the card, concentrate a moment on the person. The arcanum will reveal what you can expect from your own heart and suggest what action to take. Okay, so that's interesting. Let's have a look. What's next? Next we've got the art... Oh, I did the art... Uh, no, no, I didn't. That was the art um, Egyptian one. Okay, oh, this one's quite a lot. This has got nine cards in it. Okay, so the road to the solutions. This reading key is very simple and is generally used to answer a very specific question. First of all, let the consult consultant shuffle the deck, and when you're sure he or she has, has mixed it properly, ask him or her to cut it with the left hand, with the right one if he is left-handed. Then get the cards and arrange them as shown in the figure on page two. Okay, so you want to arrange them like this. One two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine.
Okay, so that we have there. Okay, so next, once it's arranged them, shown in the figure, right? Okay, the first card represents the quality of the seeker or the consultant related to the question that they want to be answered. The second card represents the curses that these qualities hide, while the third one represents the opportunities they offer. The fourth card represents the challenge. The consultant will have to accept to obtain their answers. The fifth represents a question that will have to be studied deeply in the future and the six is the burden to bring the final answer the seventh card represents a task to apply oneself eighth card gives a new point of view of the problem and the ninth card represents a solution to the question okay so that's the art nouveau tarot okay so let's have a look what have we got here Okay, so we've got the Spanish hmm. Okay, so that's the Spanish I don't want that one Okay, so we have an expanded um, Celtic cross. Okay, we have do have an expanded Celtic cross. Okay, so we've got the basic Celtic cross cards up to number eleven, up to number. 11 in a way because they use card 1 so we've got a basic Celtic cross right got the basic Celtic cross and then we have the expanded version as well so there are some extra cards to this one Okay, you deal the first 11 cards. Okay, so you read those first 11. As they all are. And then once the basic reading is done, the detailed interpretation can take place. This is in company. Okay. So you lay out card, an extra cards. Okay, that's one Okay, so you do the 11 cards and then you lay out the 11 cards. Okay, once the basic reading is done, the detailed interpretation can play, take place. This is accomplished by reading pairs of cards. So card 1 and 11. 2 and 10, 3 and 9, 4 and 8, 5 and 7, and finally card number 6, which rules and dominates the theme in the question. So, you lay out the first 11 cards as a normal Celtic cross, reading the normal Okay. So you read the first 11 cards, then you lay them out 1 to 11. Reading cards 1 and 11 together, 2 and 10, 3 and 9, 4 and 8, 5 and 7, and then you've got 6 on its own. 
and number six which rules and dominates the theme in question okay so lay them out as a normal Celtic cross so you've got 11, 11 cards 1, 2 and 3 okay this is a bit different because it has 3 cards in the centre so card 1 represents the questioner card 2 covers you number 3 card crosses you Oh, okay. So in this one, they include card one as the as the signifier card. Okay, it represents you as the the questioner. Number three is the um, cover. Number three, num sorry, number two is the cover. Three is the crosses. Four is beneath you. Five is behind you. Six. Is what crowns you seven is is what's ahead of you number eight sh shows you fear shows you the fear number nine represents family Number 10 represents hope and wishes. And number 11 is the final result. Okay, so you've got those 11 cards. And then you lay them straight out, 1 to 11. That's what I meant by an expanded reading. Not that you had more cards, but that you had, um, that you take the first 11 cards that you do the reading with, and then you lay them out straight. So you've got your Celtic Cross. You do that reading, and then you lay them out, and then you read card 1 and 11 together, then 2 and 10, etc., etc., okay, until you get to number 6, which is the middle card, which is the theme of the whole question. Okay, so that's quite interesting to sort of dive into there. Okay, next, Tarot Familiars. What, what spread have they got here? Again, same spread. Okay. Next we got a Tarot de Marseille from Los Carabio, right? What spread have they got in this one here? Just a one, two, three, past, present, future one. Next we've got Tarot of Cleopatra. Oh, this is a good this is a um, 12 card spread with four um, parts, to, well four you got the um, split into three rows with beginning, evolution and outcome. Okay, so we've got A, which is one, two, three, B, four, five, six, C, seven, eight, nine, and D, 10, 11, 12. Okay, so you got beginning, evolution and outcome okay so say for the four let's have a look okay here we go here the cleopatra oracle it's called is that spread Using this method, the development of a situation can be analysed, beginning with the past to arrive at the present and the future. After the consultant has asked a clear question, the diviner shuffles the cards seven times and asks the consultant to cut the deck with the left hand. The deck is then recomposed and shuffled again another seven times. Finally, the first 12 cards are placed on the table face down to four columns of three cards each, an illustration on page two. Only the three cards from the column pertaining to the question raised by the consultant are used and interpreted. It should be kept in mind that A, column cards one, two, and three refer to love. The B column 
which is 4, 5, and 6, regards to work. The C column card 7 to 9 refer to friendships and social relationships. And D card is business and finance. So D column cards 10, 11, 12 is business and finances. The first card of each column, the beginning, indicates an act or a person in who in the immediate past has influenced the current situation. The second card, the evolution, expresses the present and the evolution tendencies. The third, the outcome, indicates a possible solution to the issue. The sensitivity of the diviner will enable the consultant to understand if the card being analysed refers to a circumstance or a person. In either case, it should be kept in mind that the major arcana have a greater active power with respect in the core card. So that's quite interesting. So we've got love is A. Love for A. B was profession and work. Okay. Then you've got C, which was friendships and social relationships. And then D, which is business and finances. Okay. With the basically past, present, and future. Okay, interesting. Interesting spread indeed. The Tarot of Cleopatra. Right, let's do Native American Tarot. This is quite a good little little guidebook here. Okay, so it does talk about the Native cards. It's got traditional... Okay, so let's have a look. Didn't notice that before. Okay. Major Arcana. Oh, maybe I do, I can't remember. Okay, Major Arcana, Minor Arcana. Okay, we've got shields. Take your quite a lot. Okay, so it's very similar to the um let's have a look. I've got a couple of spreads here. Okay, so in this book it's got the large medicine wheel spread that we've talked I've talked about before. Okay, it's one that I always used actually. It's one that I used for a long time where we looked at um the, it starts with the heart of the card. The first three cards are the heart of the situation. And then it goes on and does the winter, then spring, winter alternative, spring alternative. So it's got three cards for each season. And then the two cards in the center. For, so it starts with winter, spring, summer, and autumn fall fall okay but it goes winter the alternate spring then the alternate summer then the alternate and fall or autumn then the alternate okay but the first three cards one two and three is the heart of the situation that's a card that I always, this is a spread that I always used at the beginning when I was doing um, readings for my clients. And then the other spread they have here is the Native Cross spread. Okay, again, quite large with, okay, so again you start with the heart. Okay, it's got the heart here. And then you have, okay, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Okay, so you got one, two, three, which is the heart of the set, heart of the question, 
and then you've got your four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, right? So you've got your present path. Okay, so we've got present path. Oh, sorry, I can't read upside down. Present path with the alternative path. Okay, your present path with your alternative path. Then you've got your... Okay, you've got your influences to work with and influence to work around. Okay, so your heart of your question. You've got your present path, alternative path influences that you work with and influences to work around so interesting spread there this one here is called the Aztec pyramid cards okay so you've got cards Okay, so you've got your one, two, three, your heart of the situation. Then you're going, then you've got, then you lay the cards out. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Okay, so you read, so this is to do with the past, this is the future, uh, the present, and those three are the future. So you read three cards at a time. You read four, five and eight you read six seven and nine you'll read cards 10 11 and 12 together as well so you've got the heart and you've got your past your present and your future we've got a shining star spread here this is an 11 card layout okay so what does it say here so you got number one so okay so it's laid out oh this is interesting so let's lay the cards out first so you got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven okay so that's your spread laid out one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven okay so card number one and five okay so you want to read number one and five together meanings of the simple so the first one is physical so one and five is about the physical emotional is two and six Mental is three and seven, spiritual four and eight, and then your final outcome cards are nine, ten, and eleven. Okay, so you uh, so you lay those cards out in that shining star spread, and then you read one and five together, two and six, three and seven, four and eight, nine, ten, eleven. So one and five is the physical. 2 and 6 is the emotional, 3 and 7 is the mental, spiritual is 4 and 8, and the final outcome is 19 and 11. Next one is the Kachina knife spread. Okay, so you've got 1 and 2. Okay, that's the heart of the situation or the, the hilt of the situation. Okay, then you've got the past, the present, and then the future. Okay. So you got one and two, which is your heart of the situation, which they call the hilt. And you got three at the pa past, four in the present, and five in the future. So that's a really good little white book, actually, the Native American Tarot. Very similar. It's got a lot of the spreads that are actually in the maid in the big companion book. There. Okay. So we've got before, after, vice versa. Don't worry about that one, and that's the off. So let's have a look at the mother piece round tarot. 
So let's have a look. Tarot and meditation, which is quite good. Just talk about tarot and meditation. The major arcana. The minor arcana. Does talk about numerology. Then the mother piece layout. A reading gives a picture of a current pattern in your life. The mother piece layout, one way to read the cards, is patterned on the back design of the mother piece cards. Depending on what card falls into what position, you can piece together a story that will give you insight to your question. Okay, so we have here the mother piece. Okay, so in the middle... Okay, one, two, and three. One, two, and three. At the bottom is four. Then you've got five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay, so one, two, three in the middle. Then you go four underneath, five here, six, and seven. Then you click back into between five and six is actually number eight. And you've got number 9, 10, and 11. And then you've got three cards with the outcome. Okay, so let's have a look. One is the significator, who and where you are at the moment. <coughs> so who are you at this moment? Number two is the atmosphere, the event or action that sets the stage of the reading. Three is cross-current. What you are learning about the lesson of the month or cycle. Four is the root. What you are standing on or the unconscious. Five is passing away. An event, the recent past, yesterday, the last week. Six is the sky, personality, head, spirit, connections, how you believe in the world. Seven is near future, tomorrow to next week. Number, nine, uh, number eight is self-concept. How you feel or think about yourself, whether in harmony or in conflict with the significator. Self-concept is easily changed. Number nine, hopes and fears, usually both. If it's a major arcana, it is a reality as well as a hope and fear. Number ten is the house, an individual or group whose energy you are drawing to yourself, either as a drain or as a source. And 11 is the outcome. If this, is a, if this card is a major arcana, it indicates how the cycle and the reading will turn. Okay, number 11 is the outcome, sorry. Um, if this card is a major arcana, it indicates how the cycle and your reading will turn out. If this card is a minor arcana... Okay, so, it, so if it's a major arcana, that's it. If it's a minor arcana... Turn over more cards until you get a major arcana or until three are turned over. Okay, that's why there was a three thing. Okay, the minor arcana are steps to the outcome. If there is no major arcana card, the outcome is either up to you or not clear. In that case, pay attention to the first minor arcana card and put the rest away. Okay, so that's the mother piece. Okay, so let's have a look. We've got the um, before tarot. Let's see what we've got here. Before tarot doesn't have a spread in it at all. It just has past, present, and future. If you're reading with the three decks, you're reading with before and after tarot. doesn't really give you any other spreads at all. It does give you the astrological s symbolism. Okay, so there's no spreads in there. 
after tarot I think it's the same just check here okay no spread okay so let's look at the vice versa tarot okay we have a four card spread here okay four card we've got one one two three four one two three four okay so let's have a look here what's the spread here Okay, the glance of Janus. Take care in shuffling the cards that both the front and the back can show, holding them in your hands as if to hide them from others, and without looking, take four cards and position them according to the diagram on page. Card one represents the situation as it usually perceived. Cards two and three represent the different ways in which the same situation can be examined, and card four is the synthesis of the previous points of view and the key to interpreting and resolving the question. Okay, so that's kind of interesting with that one there. Okay, so let's have a look at the Thoth tarot. We've got a mini Thoth and we have a larger Thoth. <laughs> look at the different sizes in these books. Right, okay, so I know that these have got quite a lot of information in them. Okay, so this is interesting. Okay, so it's got, this one here has got one, two, and three in the center. One, two, and three. Then you've got four, five, six, and seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay. So let's have a read on what it says. Card one represents the querent and the primary issue or question. Card two or three in conjunction with card one are the key cards describing the nature of the situation so they're in the center okay so you've got cards okay so we've got cards 13 9 and 5 4 8 and 12 in the upper left and the right indicate two potentials for the future okay so these cards that are at the top here talk about potentials for the future the two pathways okay two pathways for the future okay they may complement each other in which case the cards on the upper left are a development of the cards on the upper right if they're in conflict both paths need to be considered anyway cards 6 10 and 14 assist the querent in making whatever decision may be necessary so 6 6 10 and 14 then we've got 7 11 and 15 shows forces operating beyond the querent's control destiny or karma to which the querent can adapt in the sense they can as well okay so cards in the center which are one two and three they're the key to the question Okay, so these two cards at the top are the alternate future paths. 
Okay, and then the next 6, 10, and 14 assist the querent making whatever decision may be necessary. So they assist in the um, making the right decision. They assist in making the right decision in regards to your pathways. And 7, 11, and 15, which is down here, indicate um, forces beyond your control. So that's an interesting spread there. Okay, so let's have a look at the larger Thoth. There's quite a lot involved in this book, so just give me a second. Just lots of meanings. It's got the suits. Talks about the paintings. Talks about the 22 trumps. A brief commentary. So I don't see any. Oh, here we go. Oh, yes, this one's got the tree of life. The tree of life with tarot attributes, it does talk about, but not as a spread. Nothing there. Oh, here we go. Oh, that same spread here as well. There's that same spread at the top there. Okay, we've got Pearls of Wisdom, which cut, which is an independent deck, which didn't have, I don't think it had any. Um, I think it's just got the, the meanings of the cards. And that's it. That's my guidebooks. Okay, so that took me quite a while. Oops, nearly an hour. Okay, that's it from me. Don't forget to check the links down below. Check the links on my channel. Like, subscribe, and ring the bell so you know when the next video will be uploaded. Take care. Blessed be.